Summary of Rocket Boys by Homer Hickam At the beginning of the memoir, Homer Hickam Jr. is a young teenager who resides in the town of Colwood, which is located in the state of West Virginia. Homer Hickam Sr. is his father and the mine superintendent. Elsie Hickam is his mother and she hates the mine and mining in general. Jim Hickam is his brother and a handsome and famous football player. The Soviet Union sends a robot into space in 1957. It is named Sputnik. Friends of Homer get together outside to watch Sputnik fly over Colwood. Looking at the scene, Homer sees that his biggest goal is to build rockets and, one day, government satellites, just like his hero, Dr. Wernher von Braun. It's funny how Homer's first efforts at building rockets fail. The people of Colwood make fun of him a lot after he blows up his mother's favorite rose garden fence. Homer Sr. yells at Homer to stop making rockets, but Elsie tells him to keep going. Homer Sr. thinks Homer is only good at clerking, so she says that Homer can show his father that he can be a scientist by making rockets. This way, Homer can avoid working in the mines at Colwood. Homer makes up his mind to keep making rockets. He also says that Homer Sr. is much more interested in Jim because Jim is a better football player. He talks to Quinton, a student of Homer's who likes to read and act smart, but also knows a lot about rockets. Homer and his friends ask Quinton to help them make rockets. They are Roy Lee, Sherman, Odell, and some other close friends of Homer's. Together with Quinton, they form the BCMA, which stands for Big Creek Missile Academy because that's what their high school is called. Homer tries to get up the nerve to ask Dorothy Plunk, the smart and beautiful girl he likes, to go on a date, but he is heartbroken to learn that she is already seeing someone older. Quinton and Homer look into different rocket fuels and decide on a mix of saltpeter and charcoal. They go to the mine worker, Mr. Isaac Bakovsky. He decides to make rocket shafts for Homer as a way to help him. The next set of rockets, which are made from Bykovsky's shafts and driven by Homer and Quinton's rocket fuel, fail. One of them almost destroys Homer Sr.'s office at the mine. In a sarcastic tone, Homer Sr. tells Homer again that he shouldn't make any more rockets. Elsie and Mr. Bykovsky gently push Homer to stay with the BCMA even though he wants to do what his father says. On a Sunday, everyone in Colwood goes to church, where Reverend Josiah Lanier, the town's reverend, gives a sermon about how important it is to respect your children and support their goals. After that, Homer Sr. gives in and lets Homer build rockets. He takes Homer to Cape Colwood, which is far from Colwood, and tells him he can fire rockets there. Homer starts his third year of high school. The director, Mr. Art Bell. Turner, tells everyone on the first day that football has been cancelled. Because the United States wants to fight with the Soviet Union in science and math, students will instead be focused on their studies. This news makes Jim and his football friends very angry because it means they probably won't be able to get sports scholarships to college. At the same time, the BCMA is building a launch area in Cape Colwood. It includes a concrete launch pad and a blockhouse to keep the boys safe from rocket smoke and shrapnel. Homer and his friends ask Homer Sr. for help getting the items they need for these projects. They also talk to many other miners in Colwood, such as Emmett Jones and Mr. Bykovsky. Jake Mosby is another important friend for Homer. He is rich and charming, and he comes to Colwood to work as an engineer in the mine. Jake is there for Homer and gives him support. He even lets the BCMA members look at the stars through his telescope. A small group of people show up to the public rocket launch that the BCMA plans. These people include Jake, Mr. Dubonnet, who is the head of the miners' union and often fights with Homer Sr., and Basil Oglethorpe, who is a writer who loves the BCMA and writes glowing articles about it for his paper. Homer sees that he's getting more famous at school because girls are flirting with him. Valentine Carmina, one of the girls, says Homer should forget about Dorothy and go out with her instead. The BCMA gets some old phone lines at the same time and uses them to plan rocket launches at Cape Colwood. The main mine superintendent, Mr. Van Dyke, calls them into his office and tells them they've taken company property. 
This makes them very angry. Their bill is $35, and they say they will pay it off over the next year. Homer makes a new friend in Miss Riley, the chemistry teacher. Miss Riley is in charge of the student entries for the county science fair, and she tells Homer and his friends that they should enter. Homer doesn't want to fight as much as Quinton does, he says that the BCMA isn't ready for competition yet. Homer keeps asking Mr. Bykovsky to help him make rocket plans. Soon after getting rocket launchers from Bykovsky, Homer finds out that Bykovsky was sent to work deep in the mines as a punishment by Homer Sr. When Homer tells Mr. Bykovsky he's sorry for making him mad, Bykovsky just laughs and tells Homer to keep making rockets. Homer also sees that someone, maybe even his father, is leaving him extra rocket-making materials like scrap iron, concrete, and other things. Homer asks Dorothy to the high school dance at the end of 1958, but she says no. Despite this, Homer has a wonderful Christmas. Elsie wrote a letter to Dr. Von Braun and got a reply, a signed picture of Von Braun addressed to Homer. Soon after that, Homer and the BCMA plan more rocket flights. Their rockets reach heights of many thousands of feet thanks to a stable type of rocket fuel that Mr. Bykovsky carefully developed. Homer sees that a lot of people, mostly pretty women, are coming to the launches. Homer and Quinton finally agree that they need to learn math if they want to make rockets that work better. They talk to Mr. Hartsfield, their math teacher, and then Mr. Turner, their English teacher, together. Neither of them wants to start a new class. Soon after their request was turned down, Homer and Quinton were called to the office and met two state cops there. The workers say that Homer and Quinton started a big forest fire. Miss Riley runs into the office and stands up for her children. Finally, Quinton shows that the rocket that was said to have started the fire wasn't even a BCMA rocket. It was probably a flare dropped by an airplane. Because of the embarrassing event, Mr. Turner agrees to teach calculus at Big Creek. Homer can't take the class because his grades aren't good enough, but Dorothy Plunk steps in to take his place. Homer is upset that Mr. Hartsfield can't teach him math, but Quinton offers to teach Homer himself. Homer Sr. seems annoyed that Homer is teaching himself math just so he can go rocketry. He tells Homer that he should be focusing on his job in the mine. Homer and the BCMA go dancing one night at a party put together by a local music fan named Ed Johnson. It scares Homer to see Dorothy dancing with Jim. Valentine is also at the dance, and Homer looks at him. It's clear that Homer loses his virginity to Valentine that night. After the show, Homer walks home to find the town in a mess because of a terrible mining accident. A fan has stopped working, cutting off the miner's only source of air. Homer Sr. jumps into the mine and hurts his eye badly. Mr. Bykovsky then dies. After hearing about Bykovsky's death, Homer feels terrible. He believes that Bykovsky would not have been sent into the mine at all if it weren't for his rockets. After Mr. Bykovsky's death, Homer becomes depressed. Reverend Lanier and Reverend Little Richard, two ministers in the town, tell him to stop feeling sorry for himself and keep working on his rockets. Homer will feel bad about not going after his rockets now if he doesn't, Miss Riley tells him. Homer reluctantly agrees to keep working on his plans, and his rocket sets a BCMA record by going 4,000 feet high at the next launch. Roy Lee says Homer is too focused on himself when he gets into a fight with other BCMA members over the details of their new rockets. Homer unwillingly agrees with Roy Lee that he is right, and from now on he is going to be a team player. With Jake's help, the BCMA gets zinc oxide, which is a useful new power source. This fuel is used to make rockets that can go much farther than the ones that came before them. A union strike is going on at the same time, and Mr. Van Dyke has to leave Colwood. Mr. Fuller, a loud, angry guy that almost everyone doesn't like, has taken his place. When Fuller finds out about the BCMA, he tells them very strongly to stop doing their risky things. In the beginning, Homer Sr. tells Homer to do what Fuller says, but Elsie pushes him to talk to Fuller about letting the BCMA keep launching. To figure out the best shape for their rocket nozzles, 
Homer and Quinton learn math and gas equations. Finally, they figure out how to solve the necessary design problems and are proud to show Miss Riley and Mr. Hartsfield what they've found. Two mining workers named Mr. Farrow and Mr. Cotone agree to help Homer make the complicated nozzles that rockets need to fly three miles into the air. After their next rocket launch, the BCMA's rockets go very high, but not as high as they had planned. Home goes to a school dance with his pretty friend Melba June Monroe after the launch, and the two of them make out. In the early part of 1960, John F. Kennedy began running for president. At the same time, there are a number of union protests that get bigger and more violent. Someone tries to shoot Homer Sr. in his house one day. Homer is still upset when he learns that the bullet that was fired was only a .22, a pop gun ball that isn't deadly. Soon after what happened, Elsie tells everyone that she bought a house in Myrtle Beach. She says that she has been investing Homer Sr.'s money in the stock market for years. Now, she and Homer Sr. have enough money to live easily for the rest of their lives. Homer learns that Miss Riley has been told she has cancer. He makes up his mind to join the county science fair and works on his rocket designs so that he has a chance to win. Miss Riley is happy to hear that Homer is going to be fighting. There can only be one BCMA member at the show, she tells him. Homer should be the one, since he's the president of the BCMA and the most prepared member. The union is on strike in the weeks before the science show, so Mr. Cotone can't do anything else to help Homer. To finish the rocket plans on his own, Homer plans to sneak into Mr. Cotone's machine shop. When he does, he finds Mr. Cotone working on the rocket in secret. Mr. Cotone says he will soon give Homer the finished rocket. Homer goes to the county science fair with his show, his rockets that Mr. Cotone made for him, and his knowledge of physics and how things move. At first, the fair judges don't like Homer's designs because they look dangerous, but Homer and the BCMA win first place in the end. This makes Miss Riley and Mr. Turner very happy. Soon after, Homer goes to a school dance with Melba June. After that, Homer goes to the state science fair and wins. This means he will be going to the National Science Fair in Indianapolis. At their next rocket launch, the BCMA sends rockets as high as Homer said they would, 15,000 feet. Roy Lee tells Homer in shock that he knows who shot at Homer Sr. after the launch. But the bad guy feels bad about what he did and will probably leave town soon. Homer is moved by this news and chooses not to ask Roy Lee for the name of this person. Homer knows that there are honest, good people in Colwood, like Roy Lee and his father. Homer buys an unbelievable orange suit at a nearby suit shop in order to get ready for the National Science Fair. He then goes to a surprise gathering where John F. Kennedy is speaking. Kennedy takes questions from the crowd and then asks Homer to speak when he sees his suit. Kennedy gladly says that he will send people to the moon when Homer asks him about it. After that, Homer gives back his suit and exchanges it for a blue one that is less flashy. When Homer gets to the National Science Fair in Indianapolis, he is disappointed to see that his competitors have finished very advanced projects. He's afraid that if he comes back to Colwood empty-handed, the people there will think that he is a cocky and highly ambitious young man. Homer finds out the night before the show that his rocket nozzles and cases have been taken. So he calls his mother in Colwood quickly and begs her to find a way to send him more things. He is shocked when Elsie tells him that nozzles and casings will be ready for him on the train to Indianapolis in the morning. They are found when Homer goes to the train stop. Homer wins the top prize at the fair in the category of power. When Homer gets back to Colwood, he finds out that Miss Riley has been taken to the hospital because her cancer has gotten worse. Jake tries to make Homer feel better by telling him that he needs to accept the bad things that happen in his life and also be grateful for the good things. After the fact, Homer finds out that his request for more rocket parts somehow helped end the union strike. Mr. Cotone and his friends said that the strike should stop right away so that he could finish Homer's rockets. Mr. Dubonnet, Mr. Cotone, and others put pressure on Homer Sr. to sign the necessary papers, which put back on the job workers who had been fired. 
Along with this deal, Homer Sr. will not be able to join Elsie in Myrtle Beach because he has decided to stay on as superintendent for the time being. Elsie agrees to stay with Homer Sr. in Colwood for a little while longer. The BCMA and Homer decide to fire one last rocket. Homer is surprised to see Homer Sr. there because he has been too busy at work to make it to his son's launches in the past. Homer asks his dad to set off the last rocket. This is what Homer Sr. does, and he seems happy with the outcome. The BCMA members go their different ways after winning the National Science Fair. They don't get any grant money because they did well in the science fair, but most of them still find ways to pay for college. Homer, Quinton, and two of the other kids go on to become engineers. Homer even works for NASA and designs spaceships. Homer's relationship with his father stays distant as an adult. When Homer is in his middle years, his father finally dies of lung failure, refusing pain medicine right up until the day he died. In the end, Colwood stops being a town, and the workers move on to other places. Homer feels both sadness and respect when he thinks about Colwood. He says that Colwood made him the person he is now, and as long as people there love it, it will live on. About the author. Homer Hickam was born in West Virginia and grew up there. He and a lot of his high school friends worked together to make a number of self-made rockets. They called themselves the Big Creek Missile Agency, BCMA. At the National Science Fair in 1960, their ideas won both gold and silver awards. These events are what his autobiography, Rocket Boys, is about. After that, Hickam went to Virginia Tech and got a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering. While he was in college, Hickam was a first lieutenant in the Vietnam War. For his bravery, he was given the Bronze Star. Then he became an engineer and worked for NASA, making satellites for the Hubble Space Telescope. His first book, Torpedo Junction, came out in 1989. It was about the past of the American Navy. The book sold a lot of copies, which let Hickam write full-time. Most people liked his second book, Rocket Boys, 1998, which was a story about his time in high school with the BCMA. The book became a worldwide hit, and just a year after it came out, it was turned into a movie called October Sky, which starred Jake Gyllenhaal. He has written science fiction tales set in space, more memoirs about his childhood in West Virginia, and adventure books set during World War II. He lives in West Virginia. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.